Hey YouTube, uh, I haven't made a video in a while, but uh, this is Eric coming from Kansas again. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd use this video, this channel, to uh, also talk about uh, uh, power industry happenings and uh, knowledge tidbits uh, in that industry, uh, in addition to making more videos on backup power systems, uh, like the one I have uh, I built behind me. Um, <clears throat> I also, uh, for a day job, I work in the power plant industry and uh, industry of, of large industrial facilities. Um, I used to do some design work, but uh, uh, mainly with a lot of coal plants. But uh, nowadays, I do a lot of monitoring of existing facilities. Um, obviously, coal is, uh, uh, from my point of view, unfortunately dying out. But um, <clears throat> wanted to make a video on uh, uh, the recent events with uh, uh, all the power outages here in the southern. Uh, central to southern Midwest, um, obviously Texas. I'm sure uh, if you're paying attention at all, um, Texas is, has a lot of issues right now, and there's a lot of uh, uh, information going on there. A lot of speculation. Um, some may, may be true, some maybe not. Uh, you know, uh, some maybe people may call conspiracy theory type stuff. But um, for my experience and point of view, I thought I'd uh, give a little tidbit of uh, a few tidbits of information um, from from what I personally see that's actually happening um, that has actually happened um, so uh, I, I monitor I work with a group of folks uh, that do a lot of online uh, remote monitoring of um, a lot of power plant industry assets and large industrial facilities and um, so we, we look at how these plants are operating on a daily basis and, and all their, we get, uh, uh, get a little insight into all their issues they're having on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis. But um, <clears throat> one thing, a few, few, I thought I'd mention a few things that most people don't know about or don't think about. Uh, obviously, power plants are kind of the, uh, this thing that nobody sees, but, but we have to have them in order to have electrical power unless you want to build something like this behind me. Um, <clears throat> so there's a, there's a lot of issues with natural gas power plants and coal plants. I know people have heard about the freezing wind turbines, and and I'll go with that briefly. But um, there's also a lot of issues with conventional generation because down there in the south in Texas and Oklahoma and other parts of the South, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, and it's hitting all the you know, other southern states now too. But a lot of the power plants, whatever they may be, nat natural gas or coal. Uh, are not built for cold weather like everything else is in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Up in the north, uh, any power, power plant you deal with, whether it's coal or natural gas or anything else, uh, they they spend the money to build buildings around them and, and keep the buildings warm. Therefore, that's why they can run uh, all year long. And um, now they have yeah, their own share of issues, obviously, but. Um, when cold weather hits, they're prepared for it, and down south, they're not because they choose to build the plants to the average or the uh, a design set of ambient conditions, and those ambient conditions are obviously a lot uh, higher in temperature than they are up north, and so therefore, a lot of the power plants uh, in the south, uh, all the equipment is exposed to the elements, um, you know, pumps tanks, steam drums, uh, level instrumentation, pressure instrumentation, it's all exposed to the elements. And you know, even if you could try and put temporary heat on it to, to uh, warm it back up, but you'd just be chasing your tail all day long, all week long, if you try to do that. So um, a lot of them have chosen, uh, uh, a lot have chosen to just let these uh, assets Lay, uh, lay idle until it warms back up and they can start them back up without having to chase their tail with continual freezing issues. So I thought I'd mention that first. Um, so <clears throat> one thing is is they're, they're built for the outdoors uh, to have lots of ventilation because it's hot down there. Therefore, they're not enclosed in buildings and prepared for this colder weather. Um, <clears throat> for natural gas power plants, um, they, uh, one big thing that they uh, have, could have issues with is 
natural gas pressure reducing stations at, at, uh, at power plants and industrial facilities. Um, say you're, you have a 600 PSI uh, natural gas line coming to your site and you want to uh, reduce it down to 150 or 100 PSI and then later on you reduce it more down to where it's used at. Uh, when you reduce natural gas pressure like that, or, or any, or any uh, compressible gas, uh, you're going to run into freezing issues. Uh, there shouldn't be a lot of moisture in the line in that gas, but uh, there is still some. And if you reduce it down too much, uh, you will get condensation and freezing, um, and you'll even get that on a, on a warm day. So, if they don't have the proper heating on a really cold day, uh, you know that could cause a lot of problems with. Uh, uh, water and and ice forming inside those pipes uh, so that can cause a lot of problems um, again as I said instrumentation if uh, you have instrumentation like steam drum levels uh, tank levels and pressure instrumentation that does may have some water condensation and if, if that water freezes uh, the instrumentation is going to send out signals to the control systems that will show crazy high levels or crazy crazy low levels or pressures, uh, and, and they when that happens, it happens instantaneously. It's really hard to catch beforehand. You can try and plan for it uh, if if you know which ones have frozen in the past for you, but still, it happens really fast and. If that happens, uh, you know, your control system is gonna, gonna trip your asset, boiler, steam turbine, whatever, uh, really, really quick. And it's gonna be really hard to recover because things cool down quick. And that's why they've chosen to shut all this stuff down in terms of the, all the conventional generation too, unfortunately. Um, trying to warm back up now, so they're probably gonna start back up. But uh, um, yeah, hard to get equipment and instruments uh, unfrozen if it's out of the elements and it was shut down. So they're, they're just leaving it offline until they can get it back up. Um, <clears throat> another thing, gas companies will and have been curtailing uh, electrical power plant producing facilities uh, and prioritizing that gas for home heating. So if you have a natural gas power plant that's supporting all your renewables, uh, like wind turbines, well, um, you're stuck now because the gas company may have curtailed you and said, I'm going to prioritize this gas for home heating. And uh, the last point I have here is uh, with that disadvantage of natural gas power plants that the gas company can shut you off any time, the one main advantage that uh, um, people, <laughs> most people don't think about and uh, don't realize that they have, uh, that they are just uh, the ones that really want all this green power and green energy, which I have. I have solar on my roof. I love it. It's 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 fun to play with and fun to, to see what it does. But um, uh, it's you know we're, we're we're still developing it and everything else, uh, just like battery storage. But the one thing that people don't realize about coal power uh, or any solid fuel powered uh, facility, whether it's a power plant or something else. Uh, if you're assuming you can handle the freezing conditions, uh, if you get your fuel supply shut off, you still have fuel. You can still run, you can still make power. A lot of coal power plants, I don't know about now, but back uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, they would have between 30 and 60 days of fuel supply. So if the coal trains got interrupted for a few days or a week, no biggie. They keep running, no problem. Uh, the the public didn't realize it at all, uh, and uh, you, you get that with a natural gas power plant, whether it's a combustion turbine or a traditional boiler with a steam turbine. Um, you're stuck. You're done if you get the gas shut off. Uh, coal power plants, you can keep going all day long, every day, 24/7. So. Um, if you happen to watch this video and uh, um, you're all in about no coal plants, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you have no power right now and you're all about the green power and don't want coal plants anymore, please keep that in mind. Um, you know, for times like this, 
we still need a uh, decent mix of fuel supplies to provide us electrical power that we all love and uh, very much take for granted. Thank you. That's all I have for now. Bye.